What is going on everyone, Commodore Laz here today bringing to you another One Piece manga discussion. Now in today's video, I want to talk about Monkey D. Dragon and the empty throne that we had seen in the most recent chapter of One Piece, chapter 907. So this video is going to be about the empty throne and how I feel Monkey D. Dragon is going to have some form of interaction with this throne during the Reverie arc. Now when the throne was introduced, it was referred to as the symbol of peace, to which the 20 leaders of the kingdoms that formed the world government swore to never sit on it. Even the Gorosei, who were revealed in this chapter to be the highest ranking of the Celestial Dragons, don't even sit on this throne, for it represents that not one sole person rules the world. Now in regards to the main representation regarding the Empty Throne, in which it stands as a symbol of peace, this is something that after 907 chapters of reading this story, we know is complete rubbish. From slavery, to buster calls, to corruption, to many other heinous actions committed from the so-called protectors of the world, we know by now that the meaning behind the empty throne is nothing but a pretty chair covered in fake news. However, should the empty throne still uphold its epithet as the symbol of peace through another person, it really could represent an actual meaning of peace in the One Piece world. This is where the leader of the revolutionary army comes into play, Monkey D. Dragon. A lot of us have been wondering how Dragon plans to make his declaration of war known to the Celestial Dragons, and since we know that the revolutionaries are already commencing their infiltration of Mary Joa, we could very well see their plans come into full swing in the next few chapters. I've been of the mindset that after seeing this throne, Dragon immediately came to mind as someone who will have some form of involvement with it. And it comes down to this one scenario that may very well happen during this arc. And that is Dragon actually sitting upon the empty throne while declaring war against the highest known entities in the One Piece world, the Celestial Dragons. I can envision Dragon sitting on the throne, cutting his own shoot promo on anyone affiliated to the world government, and exposing them of their dark nature in the eyes of the kingdoms present at the Reverie. In fact, this would be a smart move on his part if he were to try and convince the other kingdoms that they can seek protection from someone other than the world government, for that a new symbol of peace is right in front of them. In chapter 904, back in Lelusia, we witnessed Bello Betty hand a piece of paper with information regarding the revolutionary army to a citizen to call them if they ever needed anything. This to me could be a seed planted in convincing the other kingdoms that they are in fact someone they can trust. In fact, they help liberate Lelusia by taking out Peachbeard during his attack. Now should that information be sent already to the Lelusia king prior to his speech, the king may feel that Dragon is a man that is trustworthy. Especially if say Dragon were to reveal some form of information that could very well scare off the kingdoms from ever affiliating with the world government any longer. And to confirm to those that he is a man who will change the world, just like he said all the way back in the post-war arc, Dragon will get up from the throne and proceed to destroy it, declaring that for 800 years this throne has represented nothing more but lies, declaring himself as the new symbol of peace, and with that, his declaration of war has finally commenced. Now the only kings that I can see refusing to side with Dragon after all of this come down to two people. Those two people of course are Steli and Wapple since I can't see them being swayed to his side since it wouldn't fit the characters that they represent. They are characters that don't care about peace or freedom. They just want to live the good life. They want to live at the top and look down on others beneath them looking at them as piles of trash while they live in luxury. But these are just my thoughts on what I can see going down during the Reverie arc in regards to Dragon sitting on the throne declaring war against the world government, and possibly trying to liberate all these other kingdoms to join his side in his conquest of taking down the Celestial Dragons. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here, and let me know exactly what you think of this theory in regards to Dragon doing all of this during the Reverie arc. So I'll catch you guys later this week for chapter 908 of One Piece as we get set to commence the craziness, the insanity, that is the Reverie Arc. So Commodore Laz, signing off. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care.